A substantial military budget and the presence of talented engineers have always allowed the United States to be the first to create advanced ships, setting new trends within the world of military shipbuilding. And in today's video, we will be examining one of these, the Independence Class Coastal Combat Ship. The USS Independence is a class of literal combat ships, LCS, designed for a variety of coastal missions to include fighting against ground forces, reconnaissance, rescue missions, the delivery of troops, and even the transportation of goods and supplies. Due to their modular nature as well as the plug-and-play capabilities, LCSs are able to carry out the missions of small amphibious ships, minesweepers, and vessels combating enemy submarines. The USS Independence Hull is based on the project of the Australian company Austral, which had previously worked on a high-speed cruise liner with a speed of 40 nautical knots. Subsequently, the prototype for the Independence was yet another project of the same company, the 127-meter Trimarian Ferry, HSC Benshijigua Express. Today, such Trimarians can easily transport everyone as part of the Fred Olsen Express between the Canary Islands, Tenerife, La Gomera, and La Palma located in the Atlantic Ocean. Plans to design and produce small, maneuverable warships capable of operating alongside coastal regions date back to the 2000s. In 2003, the US Navy approved a proposal from General Dynamics, which was developed in collaboration with Austral USA, and gave the green light for the construction of two ships. Following this, they intended to compare them with two ships from the company Lockheed Martin developed in parallel in order to make a final decision in favor of one of the two proposed designs. In the future, they would establish a mass production of 55 units. USS Independence was laid down at the Austral USA shipyard in Mobile, Alabama in 2006, and a year later the planned construction of a second vessel of this class was cancelled. The project was revived two years later in 2009, with the name Coronado given, and was set a month earlier than its predecessor, the Independence. The budget for the construction and development of the Independence was tripled by the summer of 2009. The estimated cost of the ship was $704 million, although initially planned to stay under $220 million. According to American media reports, one such ship today costs taxpayers $600 million, although exact figures were not disclosed. Nevertheless, that amount is dwarfed in comparison to the USS Independence's overall running costs, over $70 million a year. For further comparison, the annual operating cost of an Arleigh Burke-class destroyer with DDG guided missiles is set slightly higher at $81 million. At the same time, the latter proved to be excellent in battle, and the displacement of the future Flight 3 is several times higher than that of the LCS of the Independence class, specifically 9,500 long tons for Arleigh Burke, as opposed to 3,050 long tons for the LCS. We cannot, of course, forget the more impressive destroyer class armament, comprising the latest sensors. Phalanx System CIWS, torpedo tubes, two MH-60R Seahawk helicopters, and more. But instead of a further detailed comparison with destroyers, we would still like to take a look at the features and strengths of the Independence class. One of the main features of the Independence class ships is their modularity. A module refers to a standard marine 20-foot shell equipped for a specific mission. Unlike traditional warships with fixed weapons, LCS modules allow you to swap out certain types of weapons, depending on the requirements of the mission performed by the ship. The modules include anti-submarine (ASW) and anti-mine (MCM) weapons as well as Surface Combat Weapons SUW. USS Independence may also have manned aircraft, UAVs, external sensors, and special operations units. The internal volume of the ship and its payload exceed some destroyers, and are sufficient for use as both a high-speed transport and maneuverable platform. 
The module has more than 15,200 square feet within, and covers almost the entire deck area below the hangar and flight deck. The 390,000 cubic feet of payload leaves enough space to have a redundant module in parallel with its primary mission. This allows the ship to be used in multi-mission scenarios. In addition to the modules, the hangar is capable of accommodating four rows of Humvee combat vehicles along with the crew. For quick change, the vessel is equipped with one Mobicon container loader, and the lift allows you to take a 20-foot container from the air and lower it down into the hangar while the vessel is at sea. Additionally, the side ramp gives the vehicles transported on the ship the ability to independently enter and exit. Over the long term, the changing of modules should provide the Independence class with the ability to change its role in the nearest commercial ports in merely a couple of hours, which would significantly increase its effectiveness against a wide array of threats. However, one of the 2012 OPNAV reports indicated that due to logistical issues, changing modules could actually take up to several weeks. Therefore, in the future, the Navy planned to use only one specific module on the USS Independence. Its ability to change would still remain possible for rare cases. One of these rare cases was a 2014 refit, when a ship went from the anti-mine outfit to a surface combat configuration in just 96 hours. As a result, the Navy announced in 2016 a radical change of concept ordering the formation of three divisions from the Independence-class ships based in Mayport, Florida, and throwing the idea of changing the modules of the LCS missions. Instead, each of the divisions was set to provide one of the three configurations. The change of crews serving the ships was also thought over. Submarines and minesweepers were examined as a baseline, since the crews change roles every four to five months. The ship's standard crew comprised 40 people, but could be increased depending on the task at hand. Additional personnel could be accommodated in residential units based on the same 20-foot containers we mentioned earlier. For the vessel's speed of 18 knots, two MTU Friedrichshafen 20V 8000 series diesel engines are installed, each with a capacity of 9,800 to 13,600 horsepower. They are powered by two Wartzilla rotary jet engines, which give the ship maneuverability. To accelerate the ship up to 44 knots, two gas turbine engines with a capacity of 33,600 horsepower each, powered by two Wartzilla water jet engines, are connected. They are assisted by a retractable steering column mounted on the bow. Four diesel generators are responsible for the power supply to each component. The Independence class has no steering wheel in the traditional sense. The rudders are controlled via joysticks, and the helmsmen are organized like the pilots of passenger aircraft. In order to eliminate anti-ship missiles and near-field air or surface targets, the USS Independence is armed with a cluster rocket launcher mounted on a turret and a 20mm rapid-fire cannon guided by the Raytheon C-RAM CIWS radar system. These allow the ship to effectively resist both subsonic and supersonic threats. The effective range of the 20mm six-barreled Gatling gun is 2.23 miles, and its rate of fire is approximately 4,500 rounds per minute. Among other armaments, the ship carries a universal 57mm artillery mount, the Bofors Mark 110 which possesses a rate of fire of 220 rounds per minute, and a firing range of up to 9 miles. The effectiveness of this gun is facilitated by the Mark 295 shells, which replaced several types of ammunition at once, thus reducing their consumption. This ship is equipped with four 12.7mm machine guns, two of which are on the tank and two more aft as well as 30mm Mark 44 Bushmaster II and AGM-114 Hellfire vertical launch missiles of the air-to-surface class with semi-active laser guidance. The Independence class also boasts an integrated LOS mast, a Sea Giraffe 3D radar, and a Sea Star Sapphire FLIR. The side and front surfaces are specially angled to reduce the radar profile 
This ship's 11,100 square foot flight deck is capable of operating two SH-60 Seahawk helicopters, several UAVs, or one CH-53 Sea Stallion helicopter. Tactically Exploited Reconnaissance Node -E involves the construction of medium-altitude UAVs capable of operating from the USS Independence with a payload of 595 pounds and an operating range of 600 to 900 nautical miles. Today, the US Navy has 22 LCS-class ships in service. Four more ships are in the finishing stage and another five are under construction. When planning the financial budget for 2021, back in 2020, the Navy proposed decommissioning the first four LCSs, which would be 10 years ahead of their schedule. This decision was made in order to enable the purchase of blocks made in 2015 for LCS-5 and later models. While discussing details, the Navy clarified that the first four LCS models were actually used by them as test ships and did not participate in any combat missions. Furthermore, it would cost the budget another $2 billion to train four LCS series pioneers. Therefore, in March of this year, the lead ship, LCS-2 Independence, was decommissioned. And its direct successor, the Coronado, is scheduled to be decommissioned in March 2022. She will also be joined by four other comrades, the LCS-1 Freedom, LCS-3 Fort Worth, LCS-7 Detroit, and the LCS-9 Little Rock. Taking a look back, one begins to understand that for the Navy, the LCS and USS Independence class of ships, in particular, were more likely one of the experiments that made it possible to create and test a reconfigurable military platform at sea, both for the implementation and development of ideas that could be used on other warships in the US Navy down the road. Despite statements made by many critics claiming that the LCS class was not subject to changes and was, in fact, useless, the ships were being reviewed and improved. For example, after the lead ship of the class suffered from galvanic corrosion, Austral promptly made changes to all other ships in the class. The Coronado received a new anti-corrosion treatment, and the LCS-6 Jackson got a set of tools to fight against corrosion. Among other ideas for improving the LCS fleet, it is also worth remembering the attempt to base the small surface combatant on the modernized independence and freedom. The SSC was intended to increase firepower and protection, strengthen armor in vulnerable areas of the LCS, and provide an upgraded electronic warfare system. It would also give the vessel an improved countermeasures decoy system, and add the ability to install over-the-horizon missiles on ships. Unfortunately, all the modernization measures and the billions of dollars invested in the project failed to improve the reputation of the literal combat ship program, even among the military experts. And although LCS continues to be built today, the US Navy should probably just abandon the idea of supporting something like this, since it has so many conceptual flaws and only continues to eat into their budgets. They should instead begin directing funds to the creation of new ships. But what are your thoughts on this? Will LCS truly be able to prove its worth in the future? Let us know in the comments below! And if you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. With more on the way, you won't want to miss out. Thank you so much, and we will see you in the next video.